Hey everybody, this is Small Joyful Things. As always, my name is Claire. I go out to thrift stores or estate sales or I sometimes buy things from Craigslist and I look for things that tell me a story or make me feel happy. And I try to find out as much as I can about them and then I let you guys know about them. So here's what I've got for you today. I hope you can see this one in the camera now. This is a small three-footed bowl. And you can see it's got this amazing design on the inside. Uh, hope you can see it. It's probably, maybe, yeah, there we go. Maybe a little bit hard to see. Now, it's actually quite small, I have to say. Like, my hands are, okay, my hands are kind of small anyway, so the bowl is quite, is quite tiny. This, it would be a candy dish like footed candy dish of, or you know, trinket dish, whatever you want to call it. So, there's the annoying tape measure. It is a little over five inches across. I'm going to say about almost three inches high. Now, you can see on the inside that it's got this amazing design or whatever. This is not painted. This is uh, silver. And you can see on the reverse that it's still kind of, it's, you know, it's still kind of a shiny, you know, because it's against the glass, obviously. It's still quite shiny and white. On the inside, obviously, this is open to the air, so the silver is all tarnished. And it's like, well, it's not bad, you know. You can see that, maybe you can see it a little bit on the camera. The edges of the design are not perfect. You can see, especially in the middle of the vase right there, that like the lines are a little bit kind of, they're not quite, they're not entirely straight. There's a little bit of kind of blobbling going on. Is that blob, bobbling? Blob, blobbing? You know what? That's not a word. Just forget I said that. So, okay. What is this? Um, I should probably talk a little bit about silver overlay in, in bowls. Um, now this this was kind of the thing that were kind of the late nineteenth century. Okay, they developed a process where you could actually like essentially put you know put silver designs you know etch silver onto 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 glass. Um, there was a few different techniques of doing it. Um, one of the ones was they uh, they essentially took the they took the piece they they fired it and then painted they painted uh, the design on and then. Dip like paint on with a fixer, I believe is what it's called, and then dip the whole thing in silver, and then just dissolve the silver off, and it would just stay on the one place where the, where obviously the 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 fixer had been put. So you can imagine that this would have been incredibly time consuming, and it definitely was. Like silver plated clear glassware was a major thing around the turn of the twentieth century. So because it was became a very much a kind of like a novelty kind of a thing. I was like this this kind of this amazing kind of opulence because you can imagine looking from the, the, the white shininess of that there, that this would probably have sparkled when it was new, especially if you're looking at it, you know, looking into the bowl, it probably would have looked amazing, you know? Not so much now, of course. Now, the the craze, I think, for, for silver-plated glass, it didn't last for very long, unfortunately, because the, the, the process was so time-consuming and it was quite expensive, okay? Uh, but it enjoyed a kind of this resurgence kind of after the Second World War. And we start to see like you see like 1950s, 1960s kind of silver plated, silver plated glass like this. As far as I know, they developed slightly easier ways of doing it. So then you got and you got like kind of it would not take like an entire day to just paint something like this on a bowl. What I actually have here, as far as I can think, and this is going to be a piece from, from the 1950s. Um, I've seen a couple online that would have been from like the 1920s, 1930s, and they're like the real Art Deco pieces. They are thousands and thousands of dollars, and they are all just beautiful on a level I cannot describe. So I'm going to show you what I think this is. So here we go. This is, this is kind of the pedestrian version, <laughs> 1950s. Um, as for the actual maker, now the interesting thing about these is that you had two different companies that would have actually made it. You have the, the glass company who makes the, makes the blank, which is, you know, the, just the piece of glass with no design on it. And then you have, they send their pieces out or they sell their, their, their blanks to the companies that would actually do the silver overlay. And this, you know, they could have all of these different designs and you do frequently see pictures of like different, like the same kind of style of glass, but different patterns on it. 
as these these silver companies would have used their 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 blanks in order to actually create their own ranges. Um, as far as I know, or I'm, I'm kind of guessing a bit because I can't find the exact one here. I think that this is made by New Martinsville or Viking, because as we know, or we should be as we should know by now, New Martinsville changed their name in, in the 1940s to Viking and started producing more kind of a, a kind of more Scandinavian style simpler lass, and the shape of this bowl kind of reminds me a lot of that kind of stuff. So this would be consistent with 1950s kind of the re the revival of silver overlay. Um, as for who actually did the pattern, I can't find them. I just I I've looked. It, there seems to be a lot of it out there, so I don't know. That's going to have to remain a mystery. It's just mostly just an interesting, it's an interesting little thing. A kind of a, it's kind of a callback to the age of, you know, the age of when silver on bowls was just, you know, the thing that rich people had. So you may be wondering as well. Okay, for first of all, I bought this in a thrift store for, I think, $4. <laughs> How much is it actually worth? Well, I'm sorry to say that in today's market, Silver overlay on clear is, especially from like the stuff from the 1950s, is practically worthless. This is probably worth about $4. Um, there's a lot of it out there. Like I just, there's, there's a lot. I do actually see pieces like this quite, a, like I see the plates show up quite a lot in thrift stores. The bowls, not so much. And this is kind of the best of probably what I've seen definitely in the last few months, I think. Because uh, I mean, it's it's not chipped, it's not cracked, there's not a whole lot of wear on it, and the silver design is 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 kind of okay. You know, it's pretty good, quite tarnished, but that's okay. If you do get a really nice silver piece, you should not clean the tarnish off. As far as I know, collectors kind of prefer it to be left as is. They want the the signs of wear or the signs of age just to be left as they are. But yeah, I thought that this would be nice to kind of just pick up and to show you guys and get a chance to talk a little bit about silver overlay because I still can't quite believe that they actually. They actually did this. They they figured out a way to just, you know, take a bowl and paint some stuff onto it and then dip it into a vat of, like, silver. <laughs> I can't imagine that, by the way. I just, literally, of just taking a bowl and just going donk into, like, you know, a crucible full of, like, molten silver. <laughs> I can't imagine what that would look like. Um, <laughs> I've looked for pictures, by the way, because I was curious. Can't find any pictures. <laughs> so anyway, there we go. I hope you can see it there and the design again. Interesting little thing. So this is my small joyful thing for the day. Um, I hope you like it and thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.